Hello, hello, all you people out there in internet land. It is us, Fat and Angry. He's Fat and I'm Angry. And uh, it's been a while since we last recorded. It is the uh, 27th of January, 2019. And uh, today, we are going to talk about Fright Night. As it is spoken in the manner of one of the characters later on in the movie. I couldn't help but notice that, like, when one of the characters actually mentions that he, he overpronounces the T's. And I thought, wow, that just... Even in this, even if this movie was meant to be taken seriously, you'd lose all credibility just from that. Yeah, now this is the original, this isn't the sequel or the remake. Oh, yeah, 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 I, I, I fucking forgot that there was a remake there for a second. Even uh, though when we were watching this, I was talking about that. Yeah, um... So, if you haven't seen the original, uh, well, you know, I'll decide whether you want to spend the five bucks or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't going to, like, really, like, run you back. And mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not going to be going, like, fucking 20 bucks for this DVD. No, this is, this is, it's more of if you can find it. <laughs> yeah. It is a, it is a horror movie from 1985 by Columbia Pictures. Yeah, now, the first time I actually obtained this, it was part of a... VHS box set that also had the movie Christine. Really? Which was weird because neither one of the studios was the same. <laughs> None of the actors or directors were related. The only thing these two movies had in common was they happened to be horror films. And like, man, VHS box sets? You didn't see that a lot back in the day. It's like, I can't think of any box sets that were VHS that A, weren't sold off of the TV... You know, like, you know, get your get your 20 VHS collection of the Video Encyclopedia Britannica today for only 32 easy installments of 1999-99-95. Supplies are limited. Call now. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. If you act now, you'll get the handy dandy and carrying case, the rechargeable battery stand, and the matching luggage set absolutely free. <laughs> Sorry, no CODs. <laughs> Operators are standing by. God, man, that just all of that just takes me back. <laughs> <laughs> and back when, like, you couldn't watch five minutes of TV without seeing, like, some sort of infomercial running, like, hitting all the bullet points, you know? <laughs> but, God, we're going to have to do a recording just about that. Because <laughs> I'd have to refresh my memory, like, somewhat, but there's, like, a dozen of those I can remember off the top of my head from my youth. Yeah, uh, it was always a, a confusing box set to me. I bought it because I wanted the, the Christine tape, and I figured, you know, I'll just figure out what Fright Night's about. And uh, for its time, it's, it's not a bad horror movie. Um, it is it is 80s as fuck. It is one of the most 80s horror movies you're going to see. Can you think of a more 80s horror movie than this off the top of your head? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you can't. <laughs> Uh, if I think about it, I might be able to, but <laughs> just off the top of my head, no. <laughs> like, yeah, this is this is crazy, crazy eighties. Every time as we were watching it, uh, I kept pointing out, and it's like uh, every song or every like you know it, backdrop it, 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 or every it, bit of clothing that looked eighties. I go like, yep, that's the eighties. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like watching. Um, an MTV music video in some places. <laughs> well, that and I, I was going to say just, you know, like a, a teen rom-com at some points that happens to have vampires in the background. <laughs> it's, um... Uh, it was Twilight before all that glitter bullshit came and fucked everything up. <laughs> well, I, I, I blame Aaron Rice first, you know, trying <laughs> to turn vampires into this goth erotic crap, and then, you know, just... <laughs> I'm so morose, I must feed... <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, Twilight had to take it a step further, but... <laughs> it took it, like, so many steps further that it did not fucking need to take. <laughs> That's like a long walk off a short pier. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a spoiler cast, so if you haven't seen the movie, go see it. It's, it's worth it just for the laughs. <laughs> there yeah. are a lot of funny bits in this movie, and the movie itself... If you don't take it seriously, it is hilarious. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend taking it seriously. It, it's, I don't think it was meant to. It's like Vampire in Brooklyn. It's, just, it's like, yeah, if you, if you go into this movie expecting a good, serious horror movie, you're going to be disappointed yeah. as fuck. If you're going in for something that you can mock hilariously for being campy, 
mock for being just so fucking 80s and out of date, then this is the movie for you. <laughs> so let's let's begin. We start off with our main character, who, according to the back of this DVD case, because I couldn't fucking remember their names, <laughs> is Charlie Brewster, who for some reason I kept wanting to refer to as Charlie Bucket. <laughs> As if it was like, you know, Willie, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory with the fucking vampire up in it. Uh, maybe you just wanted to call him Mr. Bucket because you uh, imagine him putting balls in his mouth. I don't know. <laughs> I imagine he imagines himself putting balls in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, we literally start with him and we start with like the setting of the title. It comes up really quick. They established that the title Fright Night comes from like a public access TV show that does... A bunch of vampire movies and like a kind of like a like an um uh what's his name uncle munster or like an elvira yeah uh you know, elvira like, vampire <laughs> you know like any of those uh there used to be a shitload of them back in the day yeah. like you know elvira is the one that comes to mind the easiest for me not just because of her massive knockers but also because like she was one of the most popular probably because of her massive knockers well, it's funny is she's actually a B cup. They, they just used like tape and a push up bra to make them look bigger. That's some fucking magical tape. <laughs> <laughs> they need to make more of that tape. They need to make a fuckload of that tape. <laughs> the world would be a much better place if there was just a lot of that tape about. <laughs> it's like, hey ladies, do you have a bra? Fuck that noise. Get some tape. <laughs> some tape and a corset. <laughs> Yep. And a lot of eyeshadow. <laughs> but, uh, so, like, in that vein of, like, those, uh, like, spooky hosts, Fright Night is hosted by the guy who stars in the majority of the movies shown on there. This guy by the name of uh, Peter Vincent, who's played by Roddy McDowell. Now, I'm not familiar with Roddy McDowell as an actor, but I immediately recognize his voice as the Mad Hatter from Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. It's a um, very distinctive, very awesome fucking British voice. Yeah, I'm not familiar with a lot of roles that he's taken on, but as I understand, at least for his time, he was a pretty famous actor. I think he was in Planet of the Apes. I don't, I can't say that for sure, but I do know that uh, the voice of the Mad Hatter sounded very, and his voice sounded very similar to one of the chimpanzee doctors in the original Planet of the Apes movie with Charlton Heston. Yeah. And it would fit because in this movie he's pretty aged. He's supposed to be like a down and out, out of work actor who, like you know, he does this public access show for pennies on the dollar because he needs some work and he's typecasted, and like no one wants to hire him. Yeah. So anyway, we we start off with this show being shown on a TV, and watching it are uh, the main character Charlie and his girlfriend Amy. And they're, of course, macking on each other because this is a movie in the 80s and they're in high school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he gets fussy at her because she doesn't want to put out. And because it's the 80s, like everyone's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. we don't, if we don't have sex, then how are we supposed to spread AIDS around and ruin it for everyone in the 90s and 2000s? Yeah, so, you know, he, he puts her through a guilt trip and she's debating it. And then he notices something odd out of his window. And while she's deciding, okay, I guess I'll give it up, and takes off her shirt, he's too busy paying attention to outside So within, the like, window. the first five minutes of this movie, you're getting full-on tits. Yeah. <laughs> they're not impressive, but it's tits. <laughs> they're natural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're natural. <laughs> now, this is before they could use CG to, like, really, like, you know, bump up those cup sizes. Yeah, because, you know, they're exposed, they can't put tape on them to make them big like a virus. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he notices, like, uh, there's, like, some spookiness going around. He sees, well, uh, like, two people in his na- in the, the neighbor's yard carrying a casket into the basement for some fucking reason. Which, like, yeah, it's like, I know you're not supposed to spawn your neighbors, but if you see two, two homeboys bombing around with a casket, that's going to raise some fucking eyebrows. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not the neighborly thing to watch, but, you know... Is it the neighborly thing to bring in a coffin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, while this is going on, like, his girlfriend's sitting on the bed saying, I'm ready with her top off. And he's just completely ignoring her, which already tells me that this movie's not realistic at all. 
Because, I'm sorry, if you're like a 17-year-old high school kid, and there's a chick with her top off on your bed willing to put out for the first time, there could be fucking... There could be fucking terrorists out in the open in your neighbor's yard. You're going to be plowing her instead. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, man, there could be Godzilla fighting with, like, fucking... (laughs) Mothra. No, fuck that. Like, Godzilla fighting with, like, a 50-story high Shaquille (laughs) O'Neal. Just, like, irradiated as fuck (laughs) from some sort of chemical waste spill. And they're just, like, beating the shit out of each other. That shit is ancillary compared to what's going on in your bed right now, man. (laughs) I remember being in high school, man. I remember, (laughs) like, like fucking wanting sex all the time and not being able to get it. Because I didn't have the drugs I needed to lure the girls into my bed. Unfortunately, I went to I went to a bad high school. <laughs> that should fucking go without saying. It reminds me of this one song I heard from this comedian called "He's Got Coke, So He Gets the Girl." Which uh, in the eighties, yeah, Coke would get you a lot of fucking girls in the eighties. So she gets mad at him and like you know fucking gets all huffy. He's like, first you say you want to go all the way, and then you ignore me. I don't know what you want. So she storms off. And, like, of course, like, he's chasing her and saying, like, come on, I'm, I'm ready to do it. And right as they reach the living room where, like, the, the main character's mom is sitting. <laughs> oh, are you all having a lover's quarrel? <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, mom. I'm trying to get my dick wet. <laughs> Without a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my Charlie. Always trying to get his dick wet. <laughs> So, yeah, so they establish that they're both, like, what, 17, or, like, he's 17 and she's 16, something like that. Yeah. So, like, cut to the next day, Charlie's, like, really curious about the neighbor. His mom informs him that someone bought the neighbor's uh, house, and uh, that they moved in the night before. So, Charlie goes investigating the the, uh, basement when, like, some... When, like, one of the neighbor guys, like, you know, pops up and, like, sasses him. He's like, hey, looking for something? And I don't know what actor this is. It's not the dude who's supposed to be the vampire. You find that out pretty quick because his mom informs him that... Uh, well, also, it's during the day when he's checking, so... Yeah, it's like, his mom informs him that, like, you know, the guy who bought the house isn't the one that's outside currently. And that also, like, he's got, like, a friend that's living with him. And so, like, uh, I'm guessing going along the lines of, like, classic vampire, that's a vampire, and then he has his ghoul, or his toady, or his Renfield, or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But his toady, something about his face, it really, like, throws me off. It reminds me a lot, there's this famous scene that's become a fucking meme on the internet, of this, uh... This guy who, like, you know, he's putting out the trash, and then this dude just comes up to him and goes, Garbage day! And then just shoots him. <laughs> I don't know what fucking movie that's from, but I've seen it, like, spoofed so many fucking times, and I've heard that that line so many times. But, like, the guy in that picture, I mean, the guy in that clip that says Garbage Day reminds me so much of the dude who plays the ghoul in this movie. And every time he would show up, I would just, like, go, Garbage Day! (laughs) And eventually it kind of became, like, a joke in the movie that we had going back and forth. Uh, (laughs) Like, he'd be sitting there, like, you know, glaring at the main character eating an apple. and be like, Garbage Day! (laughs) It's like, hey, you know what day it is? (laughs) Yeah, and then, uh, next day when it shows him at school... Uh, you get to meet one of Charlie's friends, uh, his name's Ed, but they nickname him Evil, and he's this really geeky kid, um, he's kind of got a mullet, and a really, like, squeaked out, just hitting puberty kind of voice. I wouldn't really call him geeky, like, when I think geeky in the 80s, I think of, like, you know, a kid, like, you know, with, like, a, like, a thin neck and a protruding Adam's apple, thick rim glasses, with, like, you know, kind of like a Revenge of the Nerds type kid. <laughs> This kid is more, like, he seems like the kind of guy who, like, kills frogs in his spare time. He's a fucking weirdo. And I can kind of get the idea. Sorry, I was walking away from the mic there for a second. 
I can kind of get the idea why they call him evil, because he does seem like he's going to grow up to be a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's got, like, a cackling voice. He reminds me, like, if there was a Biff Tannen in this movie, he would be one of Biff Tannen's toadies. Yeah. Um... Now you find out Charlie's girlfriend is still pissed at him because she smears, like, I'm guessing is either a sloppy joe or a chili burger in his like, face. It's supposed to be, like, a hamburger, but when, like, she rubs it in his face, it just, like, it becomes, like, a meat paste. <laughs> and, like, you immediately go, like, there is not a hamburger in the world that'll do that. At least not a proper... Not, not even a McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, this wasn't so much a hamburger as this was, like, you know, your mandatory protein sludge <laughs> that you put on your synth like if this was a dystopian future it'd be like you know the protein like you know byproduct that's placed on your like your carbohydrate substitute buns <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with like yellow food covering uh, yellow food coloring number six to replace the mustard <laughs> Um, it's like fucking. It's like you know. It's a soylent burger. Let's just fucking call it that. Yeah, I, I've seen more attractive burgers on Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> I've seen more attractive burgers on kitchen floors. <laughs> so yeah, like yeah, we also learned that evil seems to take joy in other people's like pain, Schadenfreude. Like you know when uh, when Amy smears the burger on Charlie's face, like you know evil's immediately behind him like. <laughs> Way to go, Charlie! With like this really weird, fucking high pitched laugh. Yeah. It's like the kind of thing that like you're it, so cool, Brewster. <laughs> and like the reason she smeared the burger on him wasn't just because she was mad. She like she was watching him and like wanting to make up with with him. But bef like you know he's coming towards her, but he immediately gets distracted when he hears about a murder that happened, and he's watching the news and not paying attention to her. And this is what pisses her off. Yeah. It's like, yes, there's a murder that happened. And if you're in a small town where that usually doesn't happen, that might be something that would cause you to, like, you know, to pause for a moment. But obviously, fuck him, right? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you pay attention to the news and not me? Here's a burger. <laughs> Smear. <laughs> Tasty burger. <laughs> And so the kid immediately, like, you know, senses that there's something up with the neighbor. So he goes sneaking around again at his neighbor's house. Doesn't find anything. So he goes home, goes, he's watching TV again. He's watching Fright Night again. And uh, he notices that uh, there's a hot woman, like, in the bedroom of his neighbor's bedroom and he can see through the window because his neighbor's bedroom's window faces his yeah. and he sees like you know she's undressing and then he sees the neighbor guy who he hasn't seen up to this point who is like uh, the ghoul that's around during the daytime is a taller guy with brown hair but the actual neighbor who's uh let's see what's his name jerry dandridge is his name according to the back of this cd cover yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I and, don't. I don't remember his name in the movie, but. Hmm. But uh, well, no, that's his name, Jerry Dandridge. Oh, that, that's not the actor's name. That's his name. Um, yeah, Jerry. He's got black hair, and he's got kind of like a like a big black pompadour. He looks like he looks like a kind of guy who do you expect to see in an '80s movie, like in a high risk like business ventures. I know I've seen him in other movies, but I can't pin him down at this point. Yeah, moment. apparently. He was picked for this movie because he was known to be, like, attractive in other movies. They wanted someone attractive, but I'm guessing they couldn't afford to get someone like Harrison Ford or something like that. So, and so they went with, like, you know, this guy. And so, like, yeah, it shows him, like, you know, he's getting down and he's ready to, like, you know, get busy with this chick. And all of a sudden, like, you know... You can see his, uh, his fingernails or talons. And, and, like, you know, you see, like, fangs show up. Yeah, and then he looks over and he notices that Charlie's watching him through the window. And Dad immediately puts him on his shit list. Yeah, he uh, closes the blinds. Uh, but, he, like, like that's going to, like, you know, that's going to do a lot of good. Yeah. Uh, probably finishes doing whatever he was going to do to the lady. And that's <laughs> when they find out, like, you know, like, 
I think it was. Did this happen before? Or after they talk about like the the, the, the murder. Uh, honestly, not too sure. Uh, well, like so, but like regardless, even if it happened after the fact, they do talk about like they said there was another murder, and Charlie realizes that this guy is some sort of monster, possibly a vampire. He watches a lot of vampire flicks. He's a big fan of uh, Peter Vincent and his vampire movies. So he's like, you know, the long fingernails, the only being out at night, the... The coffin. <laughs> yeah, the, the coffin, uh, the fangs, uh, the luring young women every night. He's obviously got to be a vampire. So the first thing he does is he confides in his mother, who thinks he's crazy. Then he confides in his girlfriend, who also thinks he's crazy. Then he can, then he actually tries to get a hold of the police. Who think he's crazy? <laughs> and at a at one point in the movie, I forget exactly where this point uh, kicks in, but unfortunately, we saw this movie several weeks ago, and we just got down to recording it just now because of life sucks and we get busy. <laughs> uh, I recently had a uh, major surgery on my arm, uh, and before that, you were like really really sick too. Yeah. So. Oh. Uh, yeah, we were busy anyway. <laughs> Uh, so at some point, like, Charlie is actually, like, you know, he he watches uh, the vampire bomb around, and he gets more evidence that he might be a vampire. And, uh... Well, I think uh, he gets attacked uh, pretty soon after this, but... Well, like, uh, he, um... Oh, yeah, the mom invites him Oh, out. no, before that, like, you know, <laughs> like, he, he's spying on the vampire dude, and the vampire realizes someone's watching him, and then Charlie immediately jumps into a bush to try to hide. Like, the vampire's looking around, and, like, uh, like, a, like any mother in an 80s movie, Charlie's mom comes up and completely destroys any happiness he has in his life. She comes out and immediately outs him by shouting out, like, Charlie, are you out here? Stop spying on the neighbor. <laughs> and, like, you know, she spots him in the bushes. Charlie, get out of those bushes. And so he has no choice but to get out of the bushes, outing the fact that he was, like, spying on the neighbor, and <laughs> like, you know, right in front of him. <laughs> so, yeah, that really puts... <laughs> And so, like, he tells his mom again, he's like, Mom, the guy next door is a vampire, some kind of monster. He's like, oh, Charlie, you're just being, you're just being silly. And so, Charlie gets panicked, and he thinks, he realizes that this vampire knows something's up with him. <laughs> and is going to kill his ass dead to keep a secret. So, he panics, and uh, he runs to, <laughs> he runs to evil, evil Ed. Yeah. And apparently we find out that Ed does not like being called evil. Yeah. But, like, of all the things that I've ever been called in high school, evil would be one of the things I would have liked. Because <laughs> at least that gives you, like, you know, some form of threat. <laughs> it's like, they're not calling you muffin or cupcake, they're calling you evil. It's like, I'll, I will fucking take that. There are worse <laughs> things you can be fucking called in high school. Yeah. <laughs> Is like so. Is like he wants to know like what for someone who is apparently a big fan of Peter Vincent and watched like all the fucking vampire movies and watches Fright Night all the time. He apparently doesn't know shit about how to deal with a vampire. So he runs to Evil's house and begs him to tell him what to do about a vampire. So he tells him the basics. You know, like uh, holy water will will like you know vampires can't stand it. Garlic. Garlic. They hate the smell. Uh, crucifixes get them because like vampires can't stand being around them. But you have to have faith. <laughs> well, I don't know if he tells him that. Yeah, he says you have to have faith. <laughs> and uh, and like some of the stuff, and he says like you know, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, vampires can't come into your house unless the owner of the house invites them in. So he goes like, awesome. I'll make sure that he never goes in. And of course, when he gets home. His mom's already invited him over. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, I invited the neighbor over. <laughs> it's like, and I, it's like, oh, you know, well, what's the matter, Charlie? Are you worried I wouldn't come visit without being invited? Well, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's like, oh, I, is you can come over anytime you want. You're invited anytime you like. You don't even need to ask. In fact, here's the key to Charlie's bedroom while you're at it. <laughs> and here's a list of his school schedule and greatest fears. <laughs> Now, you've given me a lot of shit that you say that, like, uh, I down on women a lot. And 
I do it as a fucking joke. I do it as an inside gag, and the reason I do it is not because I genuinely have feelings for that, because I don't. I do it because, like, w- like growing up watching movies like this, there's a lot of times where, like, I don't know why this was the big deal back then, but, like, just why it was written that way. And even, like, a lot of female writers would do the same thing. Like, the female characters do, like, the absolute worst fucking thing they can do in that situation. And so, like, what's the worst thing that could happen? My mom invites him over, gives him carte blanche to come over whenever the fuck he wants, and tells him about all the shit I've been accusing him of for the past two days. <laughs> well, I know you do it and, and just, and I, I like to teach you in just. <laughs> So, but you said it on the recordings at certain points too. So well, I, got, I, I just want to make sure that people don't associate me with woman hating. <laughs> oh sure, throw me under every bus you can find. Why don't you? But like, yeah, it's stuff like that. Well, Even you, Amy, you, like, well, you throw me under the fat bus. <laughs> that's a bus that you've never had a problem being the sole like rider in for as long as I've known you. Oh, just because I can't dodge the thing because of my, <laughs> my stubby fat legs. <laughs> no, your your legs aren't that stubby. You're, you're like that's the one thing you got going. You're fat, but like you're the scary kind of fat. Like the kind of fat where someone sees you, they have to wonder. Is like I could call him fat, but he might just like you know pick me up and throw me into the next county. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing. You're like a bouncer type of fat. <laughs> It's like you don't. It's like I think you don't give yourself enough credit for that. Actually, uh, that uh, might explain like why in the career tales you said that you worked as like an orderly at like that halfway house. Yeah, uh, back when I first started working there, I wore really nice uh, clothes, and I did actually look like you know a, a bouncer to a fancy club, and uh, it actually intimidated a lot of the uh, the clients that were there. Cause like you're not you're not like five foot ten and four hundred pounds. You're like what six foot something. I'm six one and just recently dropped below four hundred pounds. But like you you're a big scary looking guy. Yeah. Um, but then eventually they made us change these uh, dumpy uniforms. Yeah, these uniforms which were casual t-shirts and you know <laughs> didn't look scare as scary and. <laughs> Like, even despite the mother, like, the way Amy acts, the girlfriend of the main character in this movie, the way she acts, is just like, she's constantly throwing temper tantrums whenever Charlie doesn't give her 100% of his attention. Like, she goes up to him and says, like, I forgive you, let's just make up, and, like, he gets distracted by something that's, like, scaring the shit out of him, and because he took his eyes off of her for, like, 2.8 seconds... She immediately, like, you know, starts throwing a temper tantrum and, like, like hits him and then, like, walks off in a huff. Is like, you are not the center of the fucking universe, girl. <laughs> the guy's having a mental fucking breakdown because he thinks a vampire is going to tear his fucking head off. And you're bitching because he broke eye contact. <laughs> no, uh... So immediately after this, after the vampire, like, you know, gets permission to, like, you know, enter the house... That night he shows up <laughs> to like torment Charlie. Yeah, he's like he actually goes in and he's giving him like an uh, option. Uh, yeah, he's I, being I, a lot more like fair. <laughs> yeah, than he has any right to be yeah. for a villain of a movie. But yeah, he uh, he's holding Charlie by the neck and he's like, you know, look, I'm going to give you a choice, something I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like he's like, yeah, that's something that like you know. That's something I didn't think about at the time, but now that you mention it now, it's like, you know, yeah, he's a vampire. Who the fuck knows how he became a vampire? Yeah. It's like, he could be a very old vampire that's been around since, like, the 1700s for all we fucking know. He could have been, like, fucking raped in an alley and then embraced against his will and then left to his own fucking devices. We don't fucking know his backstory, and it is not given in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so by the by the point that he says, like, I'm going to give you a choice unlike I do, tells me that he, if he had a choice, wouldn't be doing what he's doing. Yeah. But one way or the other, he, he says that. He's like, I will, it's like, your mom seems nice. I really wouldn't want to have to, like, you know, come in here and kill her. <laughs> and it's like, so how about you just... Forget everything you've seen and leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. It's a rational offer. 
It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like I said, at this point, that is a very generous offer <laughs> from a villain, from a fucking monster. <laughs> the monster who could easily, like, pull your fucking head off like a Barbie doll <laughs> is saying, look, you can just... You can just say, I forgot what I saw, and we can just be squaresies. But Charlie doesn't want to give up, and Charlie doesn't want to, like, you know, let him go. He doesn't want to let him keep killing. And so he starts pushing Charlie out of his window so he can make it look like Charlie fell out of his bedroom window and died on accident. And Charlie grabs a wooden pencil and stabs him through the hand with it. And you told me that, uh, that, that like, if you stab a vampire with oak, regardless of where it is, it hurts them? Yeah, well, it, it, it depends on the legends and lore, of course. There, you know, so many for vampires. But basically, they're vulnerable to oak in general. Uh, the stake through the heart is supposed to kill them, but you're supposed to do it with an oak stake. Because oak is what you grow mistletoe on. Which is supposed to be a holy root. I've also known, like, uh, I think in one of the the Hammer films with Dracula, Christopher Lee, they said it was like uh, Christopher Lee gets tangled up in like a like a thorn bush. Yeah, and, and he gets uh, like he gets uh, killed that way because it's like the same type of bush that they used to make the crown of thorns for Jesus Christ when he was crucified. Yeah, it's like it just is like the thing about vampires, and we were talking about this, and it's it's something that's been brought up a lot. One of the videos that we've both seen like a dozen times that we enjoyed. And it's been around for a long time. If you ever get a chance to see it. It's uh, it's this video that was done, and it talks about the, the death and return of Superman. And one of the things I talk about in it is there's a bit where the main character says he asks his dad, and, uh, talking to his dad about writing, and his father asks him, he's like, you know, like, uh, how do you kill a vampire? And he says, uh, direct sunlight, uh, stake through the heart. Uh, I think garlic was the other example. Well, I don't know if a garlic will, garlic will kill a vampire, but it's supposed to repel them. Yeah, well, I think that's the example they use in, in the video. But yeah, but you know, regardless, it's in, but this, his father says like that's not how you kill a vampire. You kill a vampire any way you want, hmm. however you want. It just depends on who's writing the story, which is true. The rules for vampires change drastically. I mean, like, I hate to to reference it. I mean, it's literally making me sick to my stomach just thinking about it. But it's like the stupidity in fucking Twilight is like in that one like. They can be out in sunlight. The only thing is that they glitter like a fucking disco ball. So they say, like, oh, we can't be out in sunlight because, like, not because it hurts them or kills them, but because... It exposes them. Yeah, it exposes them as, like, fucking giant sentient troll dolls. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. um, uh, (laughs) So, like, really, vampires, like, the rules they go by, it depends, like, from story to story. It just, it's like, it's whatever fucking rules you want. It's like the thing is, like, uh, vampires can't enter your houses until they've been invited. It's like, that's something I, I hadn't heard of until, like, I saw that uh, one movie. Uh, one of our mutual friends showed me that movie. Was it uh, 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 Invite Me In or something like that? Yeah, Let Me In. Yeah, Let Me In. It's, uh, it's uh, They actually remade it. I saw the remake. I didn't see the original. I didn't realize that the original was, like, done back in, like, it was a foreign movie done back in the day. But it's about, like, this young girl who's a vampire who, like, befriends this young boy who gets bullied a lot. And, like, she asks, like, you know, if you can, if she can come in. And at one point in the movie, he says, what happens if you come in and I don't invite you? And she goes into his room and she just starts bleeding out of everywhere. Like, she just starts falling apart. (laughs) And he freaks the fuck out. (laughs) But, like, so, like, yeah, so they got, like, different things... Yeah, uh, you know, like different so, rules and whatnot. Yeah, running water is another one that you see. Like, like they can't there. pass running water in Dracula. It was like it was it was a certain tide. He could only enter at low tide. Yeah, but yeah. like he couldn't enter or he couldn't get onto or come off of a ship unless it was at absolute lowest tide or highest tide. It was one or the other. And uh, well, hell, in Dracula, sunlight didn't kill him. Uh, during the daytime, Dracula just became... Weaker, yeah. Well, no, he just became like a regular dude. Like, you could beat him to death with a brick if you wanted to. He only became, like, really powerful and almost impossible to kill at night. 
But, like, yeah, he would walk around during the daytime, and that's, like, you know, he had a day life, and then he was a monster at night. But during the day, like, yeah, they could, there's a part in the book where they're, like, chasing them down. It's like, we got to find him. we got to find him during the day, and we got a gun, and we got a knife, and we're just going to murder his ass in the street when we see him. <laughs> yeah. I, always, I remember reading that part of the book. I'm like, wow, wouldn't that be a fucked up ending to this? Like, Draco was walking down the street, and he was shot in the back of the head, and then stabbed 57 times, and then run over three times by a carriage, <laughs> and then set ablaze, all in the middle of the day, <laughs> by two incredibly disturbed individuals, <laughs> a Mr. Harker and a Van Helsing. <laughs> but anyway, back to the movie. So he stabs the vampire in the hand with uh, the pencil, and the vampire freaks the fuck out. His face changes. Like, if you've ever seen Angel or Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the way they do vampires in there is that they get their game face on. I don't know, is that what you want to call it? Like, their face, like, you know, their eyes turn red, they get, like, pointed ears, they get fangs. And their faces get really sharp and angular and ugly. Yeah, it's almost goblin-ish. Yeah, like, I, I don't know if that was first used here. Oh, th this is definitely before Buffy, but... But, yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, I'm wondering if there's another movie that had vampires where they did that before. Hmm, I don't know, because, like, when I think classic, I think Nosferatu, and I think the Dracula movies, and with the Dracula ones, I most they, they ever did was sprout fangs and Nosferatu was always ugly. Yeah. <laughs> so. There's a reason why they they mm. made a race of chuds in Vampire the Masquerade and named him after him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's what the fucking Nosferatu were in that game. They're fucking chuds. <laughs> uh, there's some badass chuds. <laughs> <laughs> With great power comes great physical ugly. deformity. <laughs> comes great ugly. <laughs> It was like, he's really just some kind of ugly. He must be very powerful. <laughs> like, your power is based on how fucking ugly you are. Well, like, I had one player, and he, he was always proud of, like, you know, how powerful werewolves were. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, he quickly found that his base level werewolves couldn't tangle with Nosferatu. <laughs> You know, you remember Vampire... Did you ever see Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust? The second Vampire Hunter D. movie? Yeah. You remember that opening scene where it shows, like, the, the vampire lord, like, going through the town, and you just see he's so fucking powerful that all the crucifixes just crumple? Like, whenever... They, it's like, you know, he didn't even have to look at them. They just fucking twist into, like, morbid shapes whenever he comes by. Water freezes and glass breaks and shatters just in his presence. That's how fucking strong of a vampire he is. How fucked up would that be if it had nothing to do with, like, his power as a vampire, but he was just that fucking ugly? <laughs> <laughs> he was so ugly that water ceased to flow. Crucifixes bent into, like, lumps of metal, and glass just shattered because he was that fucking ugly to look at. <laughs> I want to... I want to see a fucking movie that does that now. <laughs> oh, God, that's such a fucked up thought. I'm glad I thought of it. Chud 3. <laughs> <laughs> the undeadening. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, homeboy gets stabbed in the hand. We keep, I keep going off topic. Homeboy gets stabbed in the hand. And he gets his game face on. He starts looking like a vampire. His fingers get really long and, like, sharp, sharp claws. The fangs come out, and he's just, like, he's really fucking hurt. And, like, I don't even... Like, it doesn't matter if it's, like, oak or anything. If you ran a pencil through someone's hand, that shit's gonna hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like, if, if vampires are like that. Like, you know, you can't kill them with bullets or with stabbing, but it still fucking hurts just like anybody else. That would kind of suck if you were a vampire and that was the case. Yeah. Oh, they did that in that one anime. The one anime with the vampires where shit goes south in the last Oh, yeah, episode. Shiki. Yeah, Shiki. Because, yeah, they, they weren't immune to, like, physical damage, which was bad for them. <laughs> because, like, man, they get chopped the fuck up and they just don't die. <laughs> Yeah, there were very few ways to kill them, but man, you could maim the shit out of them. <laughs> 
we'll have to talk about that whole like fucking nightmare in a different podcast because that warrants a discussion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, while he's uh, looking at his wounded hand and you know getting all uh, gobbled up, dear the mom, you know, Charlie, is that you? And so he's got a confused look while he's like all grizzled out and decides to leap out the window. And a few minutes later, Charlie gets a phone call. He's like, oh, by the way, I trashed your car, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a shame, because he actually had a pretty nice car. Yeah, I just needed some paint here and yeah, there. Yeah, I needed a lot of fucking paint. It was like a fucking, like, uh, guy was like a Ford Mustang, I think. But, like, the paint job was ass. But, like, it was a really nice car. It's like, just the idea of, like, homeboy trashing your car is like, well, now I fucking have to kill you. I'm gonna have to put a stake in your ass for fucking up my car, man. Yeah, fucking... my girlfriend already gets pissed when I can't pay attention to her. Now I can't pick her up and drop her <laughs> yeah. off. No shit, man. <laughs> it's like, fuck, it's a Ford Mustang, man. That shit ain't cheap. I don't care who you are. So, Charlie ends up like, he actually gets the police involved. And, of course, that goes nowhere. So now the police think Charlie's, like, some sort of, like, fucking, like, crank. <laughs> and, of course, like, in most 80s movies, like, the tell them, like, if you ever call 911 again, kid, we're going to lock you up for years. It's like, great. <laughs> if my house is on fire, I'm going to get arrested <laughs> for calling 911. <laughs> what did I tell you about calling 911? But my house is on fire. <laughs> it's like, excuses. When I get over there, I'm going to shoot you dead. And it's the 80s, so no one's going to care. <laughs> uh, who cares about kids in the 80s? <laughs> Seriously, like in all the movies, man, they died the fuck off all the time in those movies. If you die, I will make another. <laughs> so he decides he's going to go to the only person he thinks he can go to. He goes down to the public access. And he goes down to uh, Peter Vincent, the actor, and he asks him, he's like, you gotta help me, there's like a vampire. <laughs> and of course Peter Vincent thinks that he's a nutcase. He assumes that he's just like, you know, another fan, but like when the guy tells him that he's actually being harassed by an actual vampire, and that he wants to know how to kill him, he assumes that he is fucking insane. So he goes to his friends to try to help him out, Amy and Evil Ed. <laughs> and um, they also think he's crazy, but they want to help him. So they go to Peter Vincent and they say, like, you know, he's like, you know, can you help our friend? We think he's going crazy. He's like, oh, you mean the psychopath who, like, you know, was trying to get me to help him kill someone earlier? <laughs> oh. And so they want to prove, they want to ease his fears. They want to prove to him that there's no such thing as vampires. So they actually decide to call up Jerry the vampire <laughs> and see if they can do a test where they prove he's not a vampire. <laughs> and they say, well, a crucifix wouldn't work. And so the excuse uses that he's a born-again Christian and he thinks you using a crucifix on him would be sacrilegious. <laughs> it's like, wouldn't you have crucifixes in your house if you're a born-again Christian? You, you might, but like the idea of using it as a prop... I could see you feeling that would be, like, in bad taste. I guess. But then they said, like, a, a couple of other things, and so they suggest, like, well, how about holy water? Yeah, which initially disagrees with. But, but he then said, you... just tell him it's tap water. <laughs> and so that's what it is, because he has all these things, like, all the, he's got, like, all these props yeah. from his movies. It's like a vampire hunting kit with, like, hammers and oak stakes and crucifixes and holy water and all this other shit. But it's all props. <laughs> yeah, it's all props. Now, he does have a pistol in it, but the pistol's filled with blanks. Or at least that's what he says. And then uh, the holy water isn't... It's a bottle of holy water, but it's just filled with regular tap water because they're not going to get holy water for, like, a movie prop. Yeah. It's just a bottle that says holy water. So they take the kid down there. And, uh... No, Amy and evil get Charlie and they take him there and Peter Vincent shows up and they do this whole charade where like Peter Vincent gets Jerry to drink the holy water and of course nothing happens and so they go like see that proves he's not a vampire <laughs> and he goes like what about the crucifixes and then they all turn on him and it's like you know it's enough just lay off the guy you're harassing him 
Yeah. And it's at this point that we are shown... Well, actually, no. When, when Charlie originally goes in there with the police, um, you see that there is an old painting in the background of this house. Yeah. And on the painting, there's a portrait of a girl that looks exactly like Amy. And I'm thinking, oh, God, it's this old shtick. It's the idea... And I've seen it in other movies. One of the, one of the movies that really... Used it, and actually for the plot, in an interesting way, was, uh, uh, God, what was this? It was like, uh, like Rock, Rock, Rockylvania or something, like Transylvania. It was this movie, I forget the name of it, it was like Dracula, Rocky, or something like that. It was an 80s movie, it was a comedy slash musical, where the basic idea was you had this loser vampire that is such a loser that, um, he can't, he's, he's only like, like half a vampire like he doesn't I don't think even think he drinks blood I think he drinks ketchup or something like that or like he gets blood from the blood bank like he doesn't feast on people um, he does have a reflection but his reflection is of like the exact opposite of him his reflection is of a really successful sassy vampire that's always getting women and that's really successful like every time he looks in the mirror it's always just like you know like really like like you know successful version of him that's always talking shit on him for being such a loser <laughs> and he can go out in the sunlight but like um he uh, he puts a shitload of suntan or sunblock on himself and that keeps him from burning up because he's such a lame ass vampire even like you know the sun like won't burn him because it's like it's too much effort for the sun I guess <laughs> but uh, the main plot is that every like 80 years he finds the love of his life who's always reincarnated as the same looking girl but every time she gets reincarnated she gets killed in exactly the same way she's bludgeoned over the head to death by a pirate with a rhinestone peg leg who bludgeons her with a ham bone and every time it's always the same thing and like in the more modern times it's, it's like it's not in, like you know they said like the last time it was at a Shakespearean play where, like, you know, she was accidentally, like, killed when, like, you know, the actor who was playing the pirate during this play, like, you know, used a real ham bone instead of, like, the rubber prop and bashed her skull open. <laughs> but, like, the first time it happened was in, like, the 1500s, and it was an honest-to-God pirate with a ham bone and a real rhin rhinestone peg leg. But it's always that same situation every generation. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and it is like the, the, it is like the move, there's not really too much to talk about. Like, you find out that the reason he's a shit-ass vampire is because he's a mama's boy. His mother, who, like, doesn't age because she's a full-on vampire. Like, you know, she likes to keep him under her wing. And you find out that ev ev after the first time his girlfriend died, uh, he she was afraid she was going to lose him and that he was going to move away. So every generation he finds the girl that gets reincarnated and always finds some way to either hire or manipulate people so that she always dies the same way. She always gets killed because of his mother. <laughs> like in this one, she actually like, you know, she finds like a guy who's going to be dressing up as a pirate for like the school prom. And so, like, she manages to manipulate the events so that she's going to end up getting killed again. <laughs> and then, like, you know, he confronts his mother about it. He's like, Mom, why would you do this for, like, 600 years? <laughs> He's like, I didn't want to lose you, honey. But, like, the reason I mentioned that story is because the idea of, like, a vampire having a love interest that uh, reincarnates yeah. every few generations... Hmm. Is like I'm guessing that's what they were going for. They never actually explain it. You never hear him yeah. give a backstory to the painting. At most, he he tells his lackey, you know, looks just like her. It's yeah, that's all they really cover. And so <clears throat> when Amy goes with the group to try to prove that uh, Jerry is not a vampire, Jerry sees her and immediately becomes infatuated with her. Hmm. So as they're walking out. One of the things that uh, Peter Vincent has, it was, uh, it's this little, like, a vanity mirror that's in, like, a golden case. Yeah, he's, and, like, checking his hair. And, yeah, it's a prop. It's a prop that he used. And he actually, something that he, it was a plot point in one of his movies. He says that uh, it was from one of the movies where he used it to covertly check to see if someone was a vampire. 
but he but like like most of the other props, he kept it and he just uses it as a personal mirror. Yeah. And uh, as he's checking his hair, he notices that Jerry doesn't show up in the reflection. And he realizes, oh shit, the kid's right. Holy shit, the kid's right. There are vampires. Holy shit. <laughs> like, he fucking panics. <laughs> so you see the look on his face. And he panics so much that, like, he fidgets and he drops the glass. And he immediately picks it up. And he's like, oh, nothing's wrong. There's nothing's wrong. And then he leaves. And so Jerry and, uh, Jerry and his ghoul, they go like, well, maybe we won't have to kill the kid after all. <laughs> It's like, you know, now that they've, like, proven to him that you're not a vampire. <laughs> and, like, Jerry's like, yeah. And as he's walking towards the stairs, he steps on something. And he looks down and picks up his foot and sees that it's a piece of the mirror. And he picks it up. And he's like, maybe not. <laughs> so he realizes that the the way that Peter Vincent was acting funny and, like, the piece of mirror there. That uh, he probably saw me and he freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> so... Evil Amy and Charlie, they're going back home after uh, taking Peter Vincent back home. And uh, they're, they're going back, and uh, Evil decides he's going to take a shortcut down an alley. And Charlie's still scared, and he doesn't want to go down the alley, and Evil just makes fun of him. And as he goes down the alley, Evil screams out, Amy and Charlie run back, and Evil just laughs at him. Because <laughs> he just did it as a goof. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, and so, like, then you know, he uh, proceeds to go a separate way again. And this time, you know, they keep doing this shot, and this is like the second or third time that they do it in the movie at this point. But it's an overhead shot where, like, they show like a character being observed from above, and then the camera swoops down from the overhead's perspective down to like a like a head level shot, and then like it zooms back and shows that like Jerry. And so it's supposed to show that he's, like, watching someone from above and then, like, he swoops down to ground level. And it's not a... I mean, like, I can see what the shot's trying to do, but it just seems really fucking cheesy. And I'm not a fan of that sh type of shot. And also, like, the really over-enthusiastic whooshing sound yeah. as he, like, goes from, like, the rooftop to the ground. And this uh, in this situation, he's on, like, a fire escape watching evil as he's going down the, yeah. the, the alley. And he swoops down. Evil sees him and realizes that something may be up. So Evil starts running. Evil starts panicking more and more. And then freaks out when he hits a dead end. Yeah. And then, of course, like, you know, Jerry, I mean, Jerry gets the drop on him. Evil freaks the fuck out. Yeah. But, uh. And, and then Jerry goes, like, you know, is like, don't worry, is like, don't worry, Ed. Don't you want to make it so that people don't make fun of you anymore? That they don't bully you anymore? And, like, you see you see Ed get this look on his face like, yeah, yeah, that would be cool. And so he goes, just take my hand, Ed. And, like, he takes his hand and he ends up getting embraced and you hear him scream. And Amy and Charlie hear it. And there's like, it's like is, that, is that evil? He's like, oh, ignore him, Charlie. Do you want to go back just for him to laugh at us again? <laughs> so after, after Ed gets embraced, you, um... Yeah. Well, the thing is, they don't... Is like in the original Dracula, having to go back to that again, the way they did embracing in that one, and by embracing, I mean turning someone into a vampire. In the original Dracula, if he drank someone's blood, that didn't turn them into a vampire. He could drain their entire blood, and that would just kill them. Yeah. Or he could drink some of it at a time, and that would just make them weak. Now, now we don't know what all transpires. We know that he bites evil, but... Yeah. Is, is like a, the other, in the original Dracula, the way he embraces people is that he you have to drink his blood and he has to offer it to you. That's the only way you can become a vampire. You have to be embraced by a vampire. Now, in other movies, they just have to bite you and you survive. Like um, in, a, what is it, 30 Days of Night? Yeah. Or is it 50 Days of Night? The 30 Days. 30 Days of Night. In that one, if you get bit and drained, you become a vampire. Which is in that movie, they say, like, you know, whenever you bite someone, take off the head. Because they don't want any more mouths to feed. Yeah. They don't want any more vampires joining them. I'm thinking that might be the case in this one. Because every well, time they f the, the news well, reports it, say that every time they find the body of the prostitutes that Jerry picks up, they're always a headless corpse. Yeah. Uh, either that or, like, um, 
maybe it's one of those cases where he has to be like willingly changing you. I don't know. They, they don't quite cover it. But. Well, because like the only time you ever see him like, and you only see him embrace two people. Well, you don't see him embrace Ed. You just see him like wrap Ed in like his trench coat. Yeah, and they imply that he's getting butt. And um, then like uh, you see him bite. It shows him bite Amy. Yeah, later mm. on in the movie, kind of skipping ahead, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she gets bit later on, and she slowly turns. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing, like, if you get bit, you become a vampire, and that's why he takes the heads off of the victims. Otherwise, why would he take the heads off of the women he feeds on earlier in the movie? Wouldn't yeah. really make any sense. But um, unless he just likes chewing on heads like apples. <laughs> he has a theme where, like, he's always, like, like throwing an apple up and down and, like, taking a bite out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, is, it makes you think of, like, how fucked up would it be, like, if, like, you just see him, like, you know, like, with a baby head, just flipping it, and he just takes a bite out of it, like, it's an apple. It's like, he's a fucking monster. It's like, that wouldn't be beyond him. <laughs> so, anyway, so now he starts following uh, Amy and Charlie, and so Amy and Charlie try to ditch him in uh, a nightclub. And this is the part where you get the straight-up MTV music video section. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, and I looked at you and I says, why does every fucking 80s movie always have to go to a fucking dance club? <laughs> it's uh, like it's like your 80s movie bingo chart. <laughs> uh, now, uh, one of the things I thought was pretty cool is they think they're going to be safe by being in this public place. Like, he's not going to attack him there. But he straight up vamps out and just, like, starts throwing people through the ceiling and tearing him in half. <laughs> well, not at first. At first, like, Charlie tries to call Peter Vincent to, like, get him to help him. Yeah. And uh, while he's doing that, he just lets Amy wander the fuck off like a moron. <laughs> and, of course, like, you know, she spots Jerry in the crowd and Jerry starts, like, hypnotizing her. And you see her, like, she's, like, getting hypnotized and at some parts she's not and at some parts she is. I guess, like, trying to show that she's trying to put up a fight. Yeah. But it just looks like, you know, like, she's going with it. And then she's like, no. And then it's like, yes. And then, no. And it's just, it's weird. It just seems inconsistent. Yeah. And it's like when, and then, like, uh, it's only when uh, Charlie gets off the phone and he goes back. And he sees that Amy's not there and he finds her dancing with Jerry. That he tries to, like... I think he actually punches Jerry and, and nearly just breaks his fucking hand on Jerry's jaw. Yeah. And then just Jerry just, like, starts squeezing his fist and, like, nearly breaks his hand. And, then, like, finally one of the bouncers shows up and, like, tries to pull him off and, like, yeah. Jerry's not fucking having it. Yeah, that's when Jerry just, you know, fangs out, claws out, fucks... Like, he just... He, he does, like, the thing that, like, what... <laughs> that, uh... That mm -hmm. strong guys always do in movies, which is where he picks up... The, the bouncer and he throws him across the room because when you have super strength and you want someone to die you don't tear them in half like a foam book or pull their head off no you just throw them across the room and inconvenience them it's like I always hated that like in the original like in the Terminator movies and stuff like that it's like you know you could easily see like someone that has super strength like just like pulling someone's head open like a like a head of lettuce. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, and, no, and most like, of the, most of the times when they do this room toss, they have them by the neck. It's like if they're that fucking strong, they could just crush the jugular. Yeah, there, there's no need to toss them across the room. But they always do that because like if they just did that, then it would be a really fucking quick fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it reminds me of this time I showed our mutual friend a scene from this anime called Basilisk, and I said, "Check out this fight." And uh, you see, like, uh, these two ninjas, like, uh, getting into a confrontation. One ninja is hiding behind a wall, and he's got his sword up. And the other ninja uses, like, hair as, like, strangulation devices. But they're coated in animal fat, so they cut through everything. So you, he's, he's stopping the hair with the blade of his sword. But you see that as the hair is going taut, it's actually cutting the stone of the wall. And eventually it's going to reach the sides of his neck and kill him. But before that can happen... Another ninja who has the ability to meld with stone comes out of the fucking wall, grabs this dude's neck, and just squeezes him until he breaks the dude's neck, because that's how fucking strong he is. And my friend looks over to me and he says, that wasn't a fight, dude, that was a murder. <laughs> 
I said, those are the best kind. <laughs> but like one bouncer gets thrown across the room and is mildly inconvenienced. The second bouncer isn't so fortunate. He gets, I think, just clawed across the throat and he just gets fucked straight up. <laughs> just dead. And so everyone just starts running out of, of like the fucking club. It's like, yeah, obviously Jerry don't care about getting spotted at the club. <laughs> so while this is going on, we cut back to Peter Vincent, who's like packing up his shit, and he's ready to go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Evil shows up, and he says, like, you got to help me. You got to help me. And like he opens the door. He's like, what happened, kid? What's going on? Mm-hmm. He's like, you got to help me. I got to take care of something. He's like, oh, he's, there's a vampire out oh, here. Oh, yeah, there's a vampire out here. And so Lindsay was like, "Where's the vampire?" He's like, "Oh, he's right here." <laughs> and like, he, and like he fucking like turns into a vampire. And like, okay, here's the biggest complaint I had with the movie: the main vampire Jerry is just an '80s slick douchebag. That's that's all he is. He's I don't think he's a very good vampire. He's just an '80s douchebag. That's all he is. But evil Ed. Evil Ed is an awesome fucking vampire. <laughs> I mean, he's got this long ass tongue. He's got this twisted ass face. He's bug out fucking eyes. And the way he fucking laughs and his voice and the way they, they just slightly augment his voice when he's like all vamped out. And the way he moves around all lanky. He's like a fucking spider monkey on acid. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely a uh, creature. He, yeah, he is, a, he is a fucking nightmare on two legs. <laughs> yeah. And like he's, he's like, he's getting ready to fucking tear Peter up something fierce. And Peter just so happens to have a crucifix. And he just like puts it up against Evil's forehead. And it burns the shit out of his forehead. And it comes, and like you see it, like come off like fucking like taffy, <laughs> like like fucking hot cheese from a pizza. Uh, and like least. later on, when you see him, like still holding the same crucifix, it's like got a, goo. it's still got bits of of Ed's fucking forehead on it. Yeah. <laughs> and so evil Ed takes off. It's like the master will make you pay for this. Uh. And he takes off, and like when <laughs> when uh, Peter and uh, no, when Charlie comes out of the nightclub evil's in the back of the fucking buggy and he's just pointing and laughing at him and i'm like god evil such a good fucking vampire (laughs) (laughs) so now charlie goes to talk to peter again and peter's like i don't really want to do this and so charlie manages to finally convince peter he's like look do you want to do you want to be a coward all your life or do you want to actually do something with your life and peter tells him i'm sorry i can't do it and it's only until, like, Charlie's right in front of, of Jerry's house that, like, Peter shows up at the last minute yeah. and decides he's had a change of heart. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, gotten back into it. He, he's taking on his, like, role in the movies. Uh, uh, as Not only that, but he probably realizes that Jerry's going to, like, <laughs> hunt him down and kill him regardless, or he might as well take the fight to him. Yeah. And so they go to confront Jerry, and, of course, Jerry comes down... Oh, while they were talking with each other and while they're trying to formulate a plan, while all this is going on, you see that Jerry is seducing Amy and he bites her. And so we see that she becomes embraced. I gotta gotta have that uh, 80s pedophilia in there. (laughs) Yeah, it's like she's either 16 or 17 and... He's, you know, in, in like we're a, assuming old. <laughs> well, like, at least in human years, he looks to be, like, in his 30s at least. Yeah. He doesn't even look like he's in his, like, late 20s anymore. But, um, so, he, he, they're there to confront him, and he comes down the steps, and he's like, Welcome to Fright Night. <laughs> I'm like, really? You, you, you had to do that, really? <laughs> God damn it, you suck. <laughs> And so, like, uh, he <laughs> he manages to separate Peter and, and Charlie, and Charlie ends up going into the room where uh, Amy's at. Well, I think what happens is uh, Peter Vincent's, like, wanting to make sure Charlie's mom is okay. Or... Oh, yeah, 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 that's what happened. I'm sorry, I skipped over that bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. Peter goes to check on Charlie's mom and to tell her, like, to get the hell out of there because shit's going to go down. Uh, Charlie goes to confront... Uh, 
Jerry. And Jerry invites him to come see Amy. And Amy's already, like, she's sweating. She's on the ground. She's twitching out like she's getting the DT something fierce. <laughs> because she's turning into a vampire. And so, like, Jerry locks him in the room with her. He's like, you know, have fun getting eaten. <laughs> <laughs> And so, meanwhile, while this is going on, Peter goes to check on uh, Charlie's mom, Mrs. Brewster. <laughs> and she he finds <laughs> evil Eddie in the bedroom, like where she's supposed to be. And I love this because, like, what have you done with Charlie's mother? And he's like, oh, she's working late tonight, but she left a note. <laughs> and he reads it out. <laughs> working late, don't worry, dinner's in the oven. <laughs> roast beef <laughs> and just god he's so good at that man like the guy that got to play him is like and the thing is like I was looking back and like I kept thinking like something's gotta go down with evil Eddie cause like he was too much of like a toady to be a good guy you know Yeah. like good guy toadies don't act like that like I said he would be like a Biff Tannen lackey you know <laughs> yeah and so, like, to see him, like, really get the toad out <laughs> is, like, it's great. And so he actually, just to show off his abilities, he turns into a wolf and uh, goes after Peter. And Peter manages to stick him uh, through the chest with, like, a bit of uh, the banister railing yeah. from the second floor. And while, and while uh, Ed charges at him in a wolf form, he gets impaled. And he hits the ground, and when he hits the ground on the first floor, he goes crawling away with this giant stake in his chest. And I gotta say, like, I know it's just like a dummy wolf, like being pulled probably with like you know cables and shit. The way that they do it looks really fucking sick. Yeah, it looks like a dog with a broken back. <laughs> it's... It it looks fucked up. It looks like. And then uh... it looks it looks so real, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, then uh, they go through some serious, like, body horror when he's changing back into his real form from the wolf, yeah, but he's still like, impaled. they do, like, five phases of it. Yeah, and he's just, like, tortured every form, you know, as it's he's like shifting. He's screaming the whole time. It's like, it looks mm -hmm. like it just hurts him more and more the more he turns back into, like, a human yeah. form. Yeah. And finally, like, you know, when he's, like, back in... When he finally gets back to a full human form, he's, like, crying and begging him. With, like, this giant fucking jagged-ass banister pillar sticking out of his chest. And he just, like, falls down dead. Uh, or, like, finally collapses. Like, tears in his eyes, uh, sweat covering him. It's just hard to watch. Yeah, even, like, but Peter... Man, they did a fucking good job on that, man. Yeah, even after, like... You know, he tried to kill him. Peter Vincent looked sorry for him just well, watching. Oh, no shit. Just... You would, too. Because <laughs> you realize this is like a 16, 17-year-old kid that you just, like... Fucking like, murdered. You killed him slow, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, we assume that he's dead because, like, you see the burn mark, the crucifix burn mark on his forehead disappear. And so, like, he just assumes he's dead. So he goes to help Charlie. It's a good thing, too. He shows up and manages to break Charlie out of the room before Amy fucking eats his goddamn face off of his head. Yeah. Only for them to be c confronted by Garbage Day, dude. <laughs> the ghoul. Yeah. And, uh, so, like, Peter whips out, like, his, his pistol, and, he's, and this time he's got it loaded with real bullets. Yeah. And he says, that's not gonna work. He's like, oh, yeah? <laughs> so he shoots the dude in the forehead, and he eats shit down those stairs. <laughs> Yeah. And they're like, alright, that's over with. Then he gets back up, he's got all this green shit dripping out of his head. He's like, yeah, he comes back up and like one of his eyes is fucked up and looking off in a weird direction. <laughs> and so he's like, well, obviously he's not just a regular person, so like Peter just keeps shooting him and shooting him and shooting him. <laughs> empties the fucking gun. It's not until he empties the whole gun into him that the... <laughs> Like, he finally starts to, like, die. Like, you see, like, he just starts oozing all this green shit. And I'm trying to think, what the fuck was he? He wasn't a zombie. And he wasn't a vampire. What the fuck was he? Uh, he wasn't a werewolf. Like, usually, like, you'll, like, in some movies, you'll see, like, werewolves being, like, the thralls of vampires. I, I just assume he's some kind of ghoul. Uh, 
Maybe like a super ghoul or something like that, like a yeah. super zombie, like a zombie capable of like... Well, even if he was like a zombie, like a shot to the head would have done it, but I guess like some sort of... I don't know what the fuck he was, but he could go in daylight. Yeah. And he could masquerade as a human, like, mm-hmm. seemingly indefinitely. Yeah, but, like, when they, uh, when they melt the sky, <laughs> that's, that's, like, watching, uh, a bunch of green syrup and flesh-colored wax just sort of ooze all over the floor. <laughs> like, it's, it's, like, it's something I said, like, the special effects in the movie up to the, up to the climax are rudimentary at best. <laughs> like the making up Jerry's face, like all vampired up. It just looks like we're gonna put a bunch of silly putty on your forehead and nose and give you some like red eye contacts and some fake teeth and some long like fingernail, fake fingernails. But like, but like for the death scenes. But they... like for evil Ed, for the evil Ed death scene, for like the ghoul death scene, that is some like high class shit. <laughs> it's like man, they saved all the special effects budget. For the ending bit, and so now they're now they're having to deal with Jerry, and so Jerry like he runs outside, and he's just trying to bide for time because they got this ticking clock like most fucking movies do. It's like oh we have to kill Jerry before the sun rises, otherwise Amy will be a vampire forever. Yeah, which that's something I haven't heard of. I just thought once you kill like the. The vampire that like embraces them, they no longer they're no longer vampires. But fucking whatever, it's like whatever the movie says it is, as we've established. Yeah, well, I'm familiar with the concept of having to kill the vampire, well, the head vampire before the first sundown. But regardless, you know that that's the ticking clock they put onto it, and so they have their showdown with. So like Jerry's faffing around on the rooftop, but he has to come back inside because like the sun's coming up. Yeah. And so when he comes back inside, he gets confronted by uh, Charlie and Peter, who, uh, they do this a couple of times in the movie, but, like, uh, Peter comes up with the crucifix, and Jerry laughs at him and says, you have to have faith for that to work. And the first time, it doesn't work. But the second time, it does. Like, you know, you see, like, Peter kind of look, like, at himself, like, he closes his eyes, and he, like, wields it again. And then, like, Jerry slowly, like, you know, starts moving back, and he does, like, the whole... <laughs> things. Like, yeah, tell him the secret of how to, like, make you vulnerable, why don't you? That's real fucking smart. <laughs> and so Jerry jumps off, and he does this, like, thing where you see him in shadow, and he transforms into a bat. And he is a vicious fucking looking bat. <laughs> yeah. Like, just, like, really, like, he's got, like, these little scratchy hands, giant fucking wings, and this... He's about ri- the size of a flying fox. It's, it's a, a bit bigger than that, but, like, he's got this really fucking angry, like, fucking <laughs> bat head. <laughs> and, like, he's just about to tear, like, Vincent, like, a new one when, uh, when Charlie, like, pulls down, like, I think it's like a, like a sheet or something. Uh, he starts, like, breaking out the basement windows and pulling down sheets. Well, like, they're, they're still on the first floor at this point, so he breaks oh. in a window and, like, the ray yeah, of light yeah, hits right. him. And you just see him, like, burn a little bit and you see him fly to the basement in this interesting shot where it's just, it's you can tell it's just a puppet, like, flying in a straight line on a wire. Yeah. But that's not the impressive part. The impressive part is, like, you see the smoke coming off of it. And the smoke makes a perfect spiral as it goes. <laughs> and so you just see this spiral smoke trail like a like a jet that was doing a tailspin or a barrel roll. Or an aerial on roll or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> like, you know, just went by. <laughs> and so they go down there to finish off uh, Jerry, who is most likely retreated to his casket. And while they're doing this, Amy shows up. And now she's a full-on vampire. Yeah. And uh, one thing she's, I, she's got a jaw kind of like Molina's. If you're, what I was about to say is like, uh, if you if you look up this movie, look up like the I don't know if it's the movie poster that they used or uh, that's the original cover. <laughs> yeah, the, the the DVD cover that they have for this, it's a picture of Jerry's house, like the mansion, and you see like a figure in like the the second floor window looking out with like uh, light behind them, but in the background of the house, you see like this big cloud that with like this fucking crazy ass face on it with like these jacked up fangs and I thought that was supposed to be Jerry's face like when he gets really pissed off and goes full on vamp 
But, uh, yeah, it's actually Amy's face. Yeah, it's like, when Amy, like, Amy doesn't just turn into a vampire. She gets, like, like you said, she becomes, like, fucking Melina from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> just this giant open mouth with, like, full of teeth, like fucking Baraka. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the name of his race? Uh, Takatan. Yeah, she becomes a fucking Takatan warrior <laughs> and goes chasing after Charlie <laughs> to try to, like, you know, eat him, <laughs> for lack of a better term. For all his tasty meats. <laughs> and so, like, while this is going on, like, uh, Peter is looking for the, the fucking casket, but the problem is, like, this this basement is full of shit and they don't know where the hell the casket is because all this crap's there. And so Peter finally finds it, and he gets the lid off of it. And just before he's about to stake uh, Jerry, I think Amy or Charlie screams something out. And Jerry wakes up, and, like, he starts fighting them off. (laughs) And so, like, while he's just about to kill the shit out of Peter, then Charlie starts, like, breaking the windows and shit. And finally he gets cornered into a spot and finally one of the beams of sunlight hits Jerry. And you see him, you see the sunlight hit him and it's like, it's like the evil demon from Legend. Hmm. Tim Curry's character, when he gets hit with that beam of sunlight and it sends him flying backwards as if the sunlight is a beam of energy that sends him flying (laughs) all the way to the back wall where he gets pinned against the wall by the sunbeam. And it just destroys the shit out of them in, like, this giant pyrotechnic display that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And this is why you watch 80s movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, they save. There's, like, Amy turns back to normal. Peter Vincent gets his confidence back. Because uh, at this point it's established that he's a washed-up actor that has no faith in himself or anything. Yeah, he and, also uh, uh, ends up getting his career back as a host. Uh, yeah, you see him, like, he, he restarts Friday Night, even though the show was going to get canceled. And this time it's like, you know, he, d- he decides to show more than just vampire movies. <laughs> he's like, now we're going to deal with threats of evil from outer space. In this movie that I did not star in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's like, I can see why the ratings would have gone down and, like, the show would have gone if you only showed, like, vampire movies that you personally starred in. Yeah. It's like, I don't care how good the Hammer Dracula films are. If you had, like, a TV show that only showed those movies, it would get old after a while. Yeah. So, like, yeah. so like yeah. And so it shows, like, Amy and... Uh, it goes back to the beginning. Like, you know, Amy... Charlie and... And Charlie and Amy are macking out in his bedroom while, like, you know, they're watching Fright Night. And uh, Charlie looks out his window and he thinks he sees two, like, red lights in the neighbor's house. And he looks, and they're like, they look, and he's like, what do you see? He's like, I guess it's nothing. And so they close the blinds. And then it pans over, and then you see these two red eyes come out. And you hear fucking evil start laughing. Which, I guess, shows that he didn't die. I don't know how he faked his death with, like, a big wooden thing shoved through his chest, but... It must have missed his heart or something. But he says something like... Uh, I, uh, in some old vampire legends, and this is just my theory, um, staking them didn't actually kill them. It just pinned them to the earth. Well, that's well, that's just be, that's like proto-vampires. Like, that's before like vampires. Originally, before the idea of vampires, when it was just like you know ghouls that feasted on the flesh of the living, yeah. uh, the idea was that uh, you would stake them to the ground, you'd put a stake, and it didn't have to be oak, it could be like a fucking railroad spike if you get a hold of it. Yeah. And like you would just nail them to the bottom of their casket so that they couldn't get out of their caskets at night yeah. because they'd be pinned to the ground. It's like, well, now you're just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, but, like, well. you know, so that's eventually that myth would, like, you know, slowly turn into what we have nowadays of the idea of, like, you know, you have Stick to stake a vampire through the heart. Yeah. But, like, even if that was the case, evil was embraced at the same, like, the same night that Amy was. Yeah, so in theory. So shouldn't he have gone back to being a human? <laughs> In theory, yeah, uh, that, that's actually not something I took into consideration. <laughs> that's something I didn't think about till just now. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> it was the same fucking night. A day didn't go by. <laughs> it was a matter of hours. Because <laughs> that whole, like, the whole final thing, like, you know, from them confronting Jerry with the holy water 
to yeah. the final fight is all in the same night. Yeah. Huh. Well. So even if Evil Ed survived getting staked through the chest, he should have turned back to normal afterwards and not just be like a pair of red glowing eyes in the neighbor's bedroom window. Well, you know, maybe if he survived uh, and you know, went back to being human, he, like, you know, found the corpse of Jerry and just, like, fucking cannibalized it or something. <laughs> He's like, maybe he liked being a vampire. But I kind of like what he says. He says something to the effect, like, he does that, like, that really high-pitched, like, mocking laugh, and he's... He's like, you know, like, uh, way to go, heartthrob, or something like that. He said something to that effect earlier in the movie when, like, Amy smashed that uh, that uh, hamburger byproduct paste into <laughs> Charlie's face. It's like, way to go, Casanova. <laughs> You're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> but, like, I would like to think that if Evil Ed stayed a vampire, that he wouldn't fuck with Charlie and that he would just... Be if if anything at all, he would just be a nuisance to him. Yeah. <laughs> that he wouldn't like try to kill him or like steal Amy away. That he would just bug him incessantly. <laughs> yeah, bad prank calls in the middle of the night. <laughs> like you know, sneak into his bed and like you know, like fill it with burritos. <laughs> <laughs> Drop hamburger raw hamburger meat on his face while he's sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Cut his hair. <laughs> like yeah, so. I'm I'm a lot more finicky with my movies than you are. I like a lot of movies, and I'll I will watch some bad movies and enjoy them. Like people, as like I've said it before, like I love the movie Tron. I grew up with that movie, but I can't even defend that movie when it comes to it being a good movie because it's fucking not. <laughs> it's Tron. <laughs> a lot of people like Tron. It's a cult classic, but it's not a good movie. <laughs> yeah, I like Tron myself. Um. But like this is something like you know that this is a cult classic. This. This is a movie that you have to look at through the eyes of the time. And that's what I was trying to do when, when we were watching it. Because I hadn't seen this movie before. Or at least not that I can remember. I might have seen it like when I was a little kid. Because like TV during the 80s was fucking different. <laughs> <laughs> yep. USA Up All Night and Joe Bob Biggs Monster Vision. Not to mention my grandmother had HBO. So I saw a lot of horror movies that I shouldn't have <laughs> as a very small child. Uh, Nothing like watching shit like the original Phantasm when you're like four <laughs> to really fuck with you. <laughs> Boy! <laughs> it's like, man, like that, that kid's getting scared as fuck and he's like twice my age. <laughs> he's like eight, I'm four. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's like, uh, so like if you watch it from the, from the eyes of someone who's watching it like back in the 80s, it is a titular standard very, like, by-the-numbers 80s movie. And if you're looking at it in that way, it's a pretty decent movie. It's not a great movie, but it's not a bad movie. Yeah. It's not even, like, a, just an okay movie. It's a decent movie. Yeah. It's like... Like, if it was, like, a ho-hum, very basic movie, you'd say it'd be, like, a 5 out of 10. I'd give this one a 6, a 6.5, if I had to give it, like, a number. Yeah, now, like, it, if they were to produce the movie basically as it is in a modern sense... It would fail dramatically. Oh, yeah, because, like, well, for one thing, the music would just make people go, like, you know, it's like, where's the fucking dubstep? And, like, <laughs> God, that just goes to show how I'm at. It's like dubstep hasn't been a thing for, like, two or three years now. What is it now? It's like, uh, it's like, what is, like, some of those fucking, like, uh, like, SoundCloud rappers and shit, like, some of them. I don't know. Music just, it's like, sucks nowadays. <laughs> it's... Well, people would just argue, like, it's just because you're old. I was like, well, so be it, and fuck you, too. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's like, they remade the movie. I haven't seen the remake yet. I remember them advertising it on TV when it was coming out on theaters, but I just never went out to see it. Yeah, I, I'm curious about it, but... I, uh... I just know uh, our mutual friend told us that there's a scene that he liked uh, when, like, uh, the vampire is, like, going after the main characters, and they say, don't worry, he can't come into the house. And that's where we invite him. And so he's standing outside the house. He's like, and he's like yelling at him, just because I can't get in there doesn't mean you're safe. And so like he, because he's so strong, he like, he digs up with his bare hands like a gas line, hmm. like points it at the house, grabs like a fucking motorcycle from like another house's driveway, drags it over and starts banging it against the, the driveway until it bursts into flames. 
and then he uses it to set the gas line on fire, and then he just starts blowtorching the whole fucking house. <laughs> it's like, if I can't go in there, I'll make you guys come out to me. <laughs> hmm. and I'm like, well, that's one way you can do it. <laughs> well. <laughs> so, is like, uh, do you remember the first time you saw this one? Uh, well, it was when I was around 20, uh, and it was during a time when I was going to Half Price and just, like, buying out every horror movie they had on the shelf. And, like I said, you know, I found this weird box set that had that and Christine, and I was, I still to this day cannot figure out that, like, box set. Like, why like, they put those two together? Yeah, because, like I said, it, it it wasn't the same companies. It wasn't the same, like, producers. It's like, Christine's based on, like, a Stephen King story. Yeah. And this is not... <laughs> this is emphatically not that. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know... What, what would you say with, like, your first impressions of it? Because, like, I saw it for the first time. What's the... It was like... Do you remember what the first time you saw it? The first time I saw it, I thought it was pretty good. Um, you know, it wasn't No Lost Boys, but it was still pretty good. I'm actually, I actually wasn't that impressed with The Lost Boys, but then again, I saw it when I was much older. I guess if I saw it back when it was still like relatively new, it would have had a different effect on me. Uh, Lost Boys was the very first vampire movie I saw, and I was like six or seven. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not the uh, best vampire movie I've seen. Certainly not the worst. That would probably be vampire films. Uh, but for what it is, it's good. Well, we can we can give that like more talking about like you know on its own recording or if we ever do a discussion that's just like random vampire movies we can talk about it so whatever you want to do really. Well, uh, Vampire Films is something made by a company called Sterling Entertainment, which I assume is related to Nikki Sterling, uh, who's a porn star, because like all the actresses in there. Are porn I mean, stars. Vampire Films in general, not a movie called Vampire Film. <laughs> no, no, Vampire Films. Oh, Vampire Femmes? Yeah, um... And, How the uh, hell am I supposed to know that was a thing? <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, there's, uh, this one point where, like, the main character, his name's Danny, he ends up betraying these vampire girls that he's working for, and he's trying to drive away, and one of them happens to be in the back seat of the car while he's in the middle of the highway, and she's like, pull over, Danny! And he's like, what? And she's like, Danny, this is a do-or-die situation. What do you mean? Do me or die. <laughs> well, there could be worse alternatives. Yeah, well, Solve this Rubik's Cube in the next 20 seconds or I will murder you. Yeah, well, she snaps his neck after they fuck. But, uh, well, in at regard least he got to go out happy. Yeah, I mean... Just, <laughs> there's worse ways to go. Well, there's worse ways than dying in a redhead's hands. <laughs> um, well, anyway, I think that's about all we got to say about Friday Night so far. If you're looking for, like, a very cheesy type 80s film it's it, not an action film yeah it's a fun campy movie um yeah not to, not meant to be taken seriously but it is fun if you take it for what it is if you're expecting something like if you're expecting something award-winning or something really deep or something truly frightening this ain't it so well, yeah, might, keep if, that in mind it might have won a raspberry you know <laughs> but i mean like it's not terrible is yeah. the thing it's like that's what I, that's what i gotta say is like yeah. is, is like i i shit on a lot of movies but this one is n by far not the worst one i've seen yeah. and like it's it's like i said it's like if i had looked at this from like a more modern sense and like compared it to modern movies i would have hated it but i but i managed to put myself in a better mindset for watching a movie like this which is something I got. I gotta say, I gotta do more often. It's like you, you told me, that like you know, when I say like you know, oh, this movie sucks and that movie sucks. She tell me it's like, well, it's not meant to be an Oscar winner. It's a popcorn flick. Yeah. And it's like, and it was that mentality that got me to sit down and watch The Meg with you. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> for all that was. <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, that was Fright Night. And so uh, would you say this one was better than Cradle of Fear? Infinitely so. <laughs> uh, Cradle of Fear desperately tried to be something, but did not attempt to be something. Uh, it wanted, but did not put in any effort into doing so. Well, hopefully next uh, movie review will be uh, Alien 2 on Earth. Uh, I'm going to eventually have to watch that just so I can get you off my back about it. <laughs> then, we, then you can tell me which one's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Compare and contrast. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Until next time, for those of you who are, stay fat and stay angry. Eat donuts. <laughs>